This is part one of setting up and drawing comics in Photoshop. I have used other software such as Manga Studio, and I like Manga Studio for certain things, but there are other things about it that I dislike, and I really don't like the interface at all. So, um, if anything can be done in Photoshop, I tend to prefer to use Photoshop. So, here are a couple things that I figured out that emulate some aspects of Manga Studio and have a few advantages of their own. So this part one is about um, doing your rough sketching, laying out your panels, and doing preliminary work. Uh, I'm going to make a new document and it's going to be 11 by 17 inches, which is US tabloid size. It's going to be uh, 17 inches tall and 11 inches wide, so it's taller than it is wide. But I'm only going to start at screen resolution, 72 dpi. And that's because this is going to be a very large document, and when I do my preliminary sketching, it's not that important that everything be pixel perfect. And what I'll do later is increase the resolution once I'm happy with my sketches and my layout, and we can worry about inking later. But this will keep the process moving quickly, even if you don't have that many CPU cycles to spare. Alright, so here is a new document. It's 11 by 17. I'm going to press Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac to show the rulers. These rulers are set with um, inches, but if you right click um, on the ruler, you can set it to whatever units you prefer to use. I also am going to use a grid. If you go to Edit and Preferences, you can find the section for grids, and there you can set what kind of a grid you want here under grid. I've got a grid line every one inch and I've got quarter inch subdivisions. So it'll show a heavy line every inch and then small dotted lines every quarter inch. And if I turn on the grid by pressing control and then uh, apostrophe, you'll see now we have this nice grid with subdivisions. And this is what I'm going to be using to help lay out where I want my panels. So the first thing I can do is to create a new layer and um, with just any old Photoshop brush tool and a tablet, just start kind of sketching in where I want the panels to go. And I don't have to be all that exact about it. I I'm just going to put them in very casually because I'm going to be making them using the rectangular marquee tool later and they'll be exact. So, just sketching this stuff out. And I'm trying to leave a, uh, about a half an inch margin around the edge of the page and leaving <coughs> half inch gutters between the panels. So, let's say I want it to look like this. You know, that's roughly what it's supposed to be. So now I'm going to take this layer and bring it down, the opacity down to very light, make a new layer, then take the rectangular marquee tool and start to drag out panel, rectangular panels that are roughly where these things are in space. I'm going to make sure that I have snap to grid on because that will make sure that my panels are always going to be in quarter inch increments. So I'm going to start um, about here, so I keep a quarter inch margin all around. I selected out a rectangular frame and then I'm going to fill it with my foreground color by pressing Alt or Option and then Backspace. And then I press V and switch to the Move tool and I'm hovering over this rectangular selection and right now if I were to move this selection you can see if you look closely the cursor has a scissor icon, and that means that it's going to cut and move around this selection. So if I move it around, it moves from its original spot. I'm going to undo that. If I hold down the Alt button, which I believe is Option on the Mac, you can see that the cursor has changed into two little mini double triangles. That's a clone or duplicate um, command. So if I now pull away from the selection, it makes another selection and that's good if you want to make another panel that is, looks just like the first one. 
if I let go of Alt, now I'm back to selecting this new panel that I cloned from the first one. One thing that I do all the time, if you look on your option bar, there's a section, there's a check mark that says show transform controls. And, and uh, I never used to use this for years, but what it does is it, um, every time you use the move tool, it means you're also free transforming, which is very useful because it means you don't have to constantly press control T to get into transform mode. All of your transform controls are always there whenever you move anything. And um, you can always resize things. Um, so this panel, I want it to be a little bit, a little bit wider. So I'm pulling that out there and I'm pressing enter. I'm going to use the magic wand tool, go back to my first panel and draw that out a little bit more too. Press enter. I'm going to clone out this panel again, just because I think life is a bit easier if you just clone the panels instead of dragging with the rectangular marquee every time. That's just my taste. I'm gonna drag this one out here. So I'm just cloning and transforming to get the panels approximately where I want them to be. This one is not quite the right size, so I'm gonna transform it again. There. Okay, so now I've got, I think I can hide my grid because it's pretty much clear. Now I've got, um, I've got this, this page of a bunch of rectangles. They're, they're nicely spaced apart. There's good breathing room between them. This is going to be where I want my panels to be. And I did them in black so that I can see them really clearly against the white background. But I'm going to do something that's going to both make the panels invisible, give them a border, and mask out the rest of the, uh, of the layers that we're going to draw so that no matter what, you're, all, you're always going to be drawing within the panel boundary. You're not going to be drawing in the white space in between. If you press control, um, you will, and you click on a layer. If you look down near her, on the layers palette, as I'm holding down control, you see the hand icon, and it has a tiny little marquee superimposed over it. And as I let go of control, it disappears. So you can see control, no control, control, no control. Control clicking on a layer selects only the content of the layer. If I make my background disappear, you can see that I have a transparent universe here. There's nothing on this layer, layer two, except these black squares. So when I control click it, only the black will be selected. Um, now, what I'm going to do is that now I have the panel area selected, I'm going to create a group by clicking on this little folder icon and I'm going to press the mask button and I'm going to add a mask to the entire group. If you look very closely you will see that the, the, the inverse of the panel area is now represented on this mask which means that only the panel area is active in whatever is going to be inside this group. Even if I make these squares invisible now and make the background visible. I'm going to make a new layer which is inside this masked group. And as I draw, you can see that the panel boundaries are the active area. I'm trying to draw in between, but I can't. It's masked off. And that's really nice. Because this mask applies to this, gr this group, every layer and every group I put inside will have this mask on it. I can't make anything over this boundary unless I make something that is above and outside of this group. So right now I've got this mask group, there's nothing in it, and then I've got these panels. 
which are all in black. And I made them in black, as I said, so I could see them easily. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them invisible. But I'm going to do it in a particular way. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this layer, which will bring up the layer style, um, the layer style dialog box. And I'm going to apply a stroke to the outside of the layer. And you can see, because it's black on black, because the stroke color is black and the boxes are black, you can, you, all you can see is momentarily the stroke appear, but it's there. I'm just going to put that on there. I can always change it later. It's, it's a live effect, so it, can, it doesn't affect the pixels. It's non-destructive. I'm going to apply the stroke to this layer, and I'm going to press OK. So now I have black boxes with black borders around them. It's kind of tough to see. Now, one of the, the original ways in Photoshop that you could control the visibility of a layer, which has been in Photoshop forever, is layer opacity. So if I dial down layer opacity, these black squares gradually become grayer and grayer until they disappear. But the problem with reducing layer opacity is that it decreases the effects of the layer along with the contents of the layer. So if I were to have a stroke or a drop shadow or a glow effect on the layer and the layer opacity is at zero, you can't see the effects either. This is not the case with fill. The magic of fill is that you can make the contents of the layer invisible, but make only the effects show up. And that's very powerful, because watch. Right now, the fill is zero. I have a bunch of transparent boxes which have borders around them. So now I have panel borders that are um, visible, but the contents of the layer are invisible. And you can't make transparent boxes in Photoshop and put borders around them. You have to fill the layer with something if you want there to be an effect on it. So I can go back in and adjust the size of the borders to my liking. Later on I might change them a bit more. It doesn't matter, I can make them different colors. Um, I can do whatever I want and the, um, the black boxes are just not there. We can't see them and we can s if we put something under them we could see through them. They're no longer opaque, but the layer opacity is still at 100%. So here's what we have now. We've got um, the panels themselves and their border on, a, on one layer, and then we have the panel area as this group. And I'm going to name the group Panels. Now, once I've got these panels, I can make multiple groups within this group and they will all be bound by this mask I created. So one of the nice things about Manga Studio is that every time you make a panel it puts it in its own folder with its own mask. And I can do that in Photoshop too. If I make a new group and put it inside this one, you can see that they're now nested. I'm going to call this panel A1. Just as an aside, the way I like to name panels is as though you were having um, like map coordinates. If you've ever looked at a map, you've got A, B, C, and then you've got 1, 2, 3. So this would be A1, this would be A2, this would be B1, this would be B2, C1, C2. So instead of calling something panel 1 and not knowing whether it's this or this, depending on whether you're reading left to right or right to left, or what's panel four, uh, uh, where is this supposed to go? I just do by row and then column. So this is going to be the upper leftmost panel will be A1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my panels layer where the layer box, where the panel boxes live. And I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select this first box. Even though we can't see it, it's still there. So now that this panel box is selected, I can click on the group A1 and press the mask button, which we did for the, uh, the group that's one level above. Hit the mask button. And as you can see in the little icon that indicates the mask, now 
the only thing that will be allowed to be visible in this whole group and all the layers and groups within it is this one panel, A1. So if I make a layer in this group and I start drawing, as I showed you before, not only can I not draw in the, in the white area around, but I can't draw in any of the other panels either. I can draw outside the panel to my heart's content and it won't show up. And that's nice. And so I can do the same thing for each of my panels, or it may be that you're not so concerned about staying in each individual panel and you just want to draw in general in the overall area. So um, that's how you set up panels in Photoshop. You can, um, the nice thing about this system is that you can make your panels in whatever shape you want, it doesn't matter, as long as they exist on a layer and as long as they can be selected, you can make whatever kind of panel you want. So I'll show you an example of this. You're, um, I'm going to throw away this group. I'm going to throw away... Um, I'm going to I'm gonna um, throw away this layer. I'm going to start all over again to show you what it would be like to make a panel with completely different shape that's eccentric and weird. So I'm going to make a new layer to sketch out where I want my panels to be. And using the lasso tool, I'm going to do this. I just have a big weird shape, and then I'm going to have this, and that's like this, and then I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have an ellipse over here, and I'm going to have a rectangle, and it's going to be, um, the rectangle is going to be on its side, so I've got this abstract art here, and um, I'm going to control click it to select only the active area. I'm going to create a new group, mask it according to that selection. I'm going to select this layer, double click it to bring up the layer styles, put a stroke on it, reduce the layer fill to zero. I'm going to make that stroke a little bit narrower. And now uh, you can see I've got the same thing. I've got panels, and I can only draw within the panels. And you can do this in other software, but it is not as quick. In this, you can make anything you want. You could make you could make uh, someone's silhouette. You could do anything and make it into a panel immediately. And um, you can also it's a little bit trickier and maybe I'll get into it later. If you want to paint in panels, you can paint them in just by painting on the layer that has the stroke around it. You can keep adding to the panel to your heart's content. You'll have to modify the mask as well, but that's somewhat easy to do. I don't want to get too far afield here, but as you can see, you can do anything you want with these panels. You're not limited to any particular shape. You're not even limited to geometric shapes. You can make them organic. You can turn them. You can twist them. You can do whatever you want um, on this layer that will have the panel boundaries on it. And I think that that's very powerful. So that's the end of this episode. In the next one I'm going to show about creating sketch layers in Photoshop, which is a feature that I really like about Manga Studio. Um, but I prefer to use the brush tools of Photoshop, so I'd like to be able to take that feature and recreate it in Photoshop. So that's going to be in chapter two. Thanks for watching.